G'day. Welcome to uh, my introduction to the Tool Factory session. Um, the Tool Factory is a Galaxy tool wrapper and uh, it's designed for developers who are new to Galaxy. So in this talk, um, I'm gonna cover from a developer's point of view, uh, tools as a general concept in Galaxy. Um, I'm gonna talk about programming this, uh, the abstract tool interface that the framework offers. Then uh, talk a bit about how automation for simple tools is possible and uh, what it can do. And then um, I'll discuss some of the limits and, and also some of the aspects of the value proposition that the Tool Factory offers to uh, developers in Galaxy. So from a, the point of view of a user, if you ask them what Galaxy really is, they'll probably talk about the tools because that's really what they see. Um, they're drawn to Galaxy if there are tools available that support their data and their analysis. Otherwise, not so much. And from the point of view of any given user, depending on their scientific domain of practice, uh, any available tools that are seen in a Galaxy instance will be valued purely for their utility in terms of uh, how they can be used as analysis components uh, for their data and, and their analysis. So, I'd argue that tools are really what users see as Galaxy. The framework itself is generic and um, most users probably don't even notice it. It's just there. Uh, and because of the way Galaxy works, tools effectively provide a kind of scientific domain flavor to any given Galaxy. Uh, some tools are very, very generic. Nearly all users are going to use them, such as the upload tool. Most tools, I'd argue, are probably fairly specific to some kind of data or some kind of scientific practice. Uh, and if you think about a mapper or an assembler, it's got utility in a couple of different broad scientific domains, but uh, in climate science, perhaps not so much. So that leads to the idea that in order for Galaxy to grow by uh, reaching new scientific communities and new users, we need domain specific tools. Uh, as you all know, Galaxy originated in uh, genome science. And as a result, early on, the only tools that we were wrapping were genomic tools because that's all we were using. However, more recently, uh, it's used in many other branches of science. So those doing climate science require quite a different toolkit from those doing uh, natural language processing science. And uh, the, the value of any given galaxy to any given user will depend on the, the mapping between their interests and uh, the capabilities of the tools. So I'd argue that if you're interested in seeing galaxy grow, as I am, uh, you'd be interested in attracting users from new scientific domains and um, attracting users from existing scientific domains by extending the range of new relevant tools. In other words, tools are what drive Galaxy uptake. Uh, the more tool builders there are, the more people who are capable of building tools, the more tools there are likely to be. Uh, and thus the faster galaxy can grow and uh, spread, uh, leading to world domination, uh, which is of course our main, our main aim. So in order to build tools, you as a developer, and I assume you're a developer if, 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 uh, if you're watching this uh, talk, uh, you're gonna have to come to terms with the abstract tool interface uh, that Galaxy offers. The framework is very efficiently and effectively decoupled from tools uh, and tool execution by an abstract tool interface. That interface allows virtually any Linux command line package uh, to be wrapped uh, as a tool. And uh, the framework doesn't care. The framework is agnostic to all of the complications that happen in tool space, including things like the language that the, the, the tool package is implemented in, the domain in which the tool is used. None of these things are of, of any importance to the Galaxy framework. It, it just sees uh, a tool at the end of a 
an abstract interface. It just sees the, the interface. The wrapper that's written uh, for the, the abstract tool interface for each package uh, to turn it into a tool, more or less plugs the package into the framework. Uh, and that kind of pluggable interface specifies all of the things that the framework needs to know about the operation of the tool, including things like what dependencies have to be present, uh, what the inputs are from the user's history, what happens to outputs from the, uh, the package that's running inside the tool. And uh, of course, most importantly, what the command line for the package that's uh, emitted by the tool uh, looks like. We're only going to talk about XML here, but there, there is a whole infrastructure for a common workflow language. Uh, about which I know nothing, so I won't say anything. There exists already, naturally, because Galaxy has been around for 15 years, a pretty comprehensive infrastructure for making new tools. And the basis for most uh, complicated Galaxy tools is the command section of that XML document, because it allows templating and Python code to be included in a kind of bash-like environment. Um, and the big advantage of doing this inside the command section of the document is that you have access to the tool namespace. Because the uh, complex conditional logic is actually embedded in the document, um, it's very efficient because you've got access to all of the tools variables without any parameter passing. They're just there in the namespace. And you've got access to Python, so you can do some pretty fancy uh, logic. Um, and that logic uh, is far preferred by experienced tool builders. That's what they prefer to use, and, and, and that's really what most tools are built on. And the project supports that style of tool building uh, with Planemo, the newer Gal Galaxy language server. And of course, there are other tutorials in this training week. Okay, so we've talked a little bit about tools and the framework from a user's point of view and from a developer's point of view. And uh, I'd now like to move on to the, uh, the main thing that interests me, which is automating the building of simple tools as far as is possible. So to what extent is it possible to generate uh, that XML wrapper uh, that I showed you for a fairly complex tool? Well, we can't generate those complicated ones, but if you think about what's needed and um, uh, for the tool factory, what I, what I found is that there are really five things that you've got to think about, as well as lots of other things. But the first thing you need is something that's going to do the work of the tool, the workhorse, the thing that does the calculation or the manipulation of, of input data and writes the output files. In the tool factory, the focus is on working scripts. That is things that you've proven work on the command line with small data sets. Uh, it will also handle conda dependencies that can be part of the script or uh, that there can be no script. Uh, that's an option in the tool factory, but the focus is really on scripts because this is where you can put the kind of logic that you would need to write by hand um, for your tool if it requires complex conditional logic involving the parameters. The second thing you need, aside from the workhorse, are some inputs. You need to know what the script will consume uh, in terms of inputs from the user's history, which data files are going to be needed. And for each of those, you should have a small test sample because every Galaxy tool should have a test and the tool factory will build one for you if you supply, uh, in fact, it won't build the tool unless you supply uh, samples of each input data set. You also need to know what the script is going to emit and uh, because the tool factory or manually, you you have to uh, provide a, a route for those newly created files to be uh, to appear in the user's history when a job execution completes. You need to know what the user is going to be able to supply to the script. Some, some variables may be uh, user controllable, others may be built, baked into the script. Finally, um, you need the, some logic and uh, a pass criterion for some kind of automated test because, uh, because every good Galaxy tool has an automated test, at least one. So let's think a little bit about how we might tackle something 
uh, trivial, like the demonstration Hello World program that everybody writes for their, uh, the first time they meet a new programming environment, the first thing we'd need would be a script. So we could create a text file called hello.sh containing echo hello dollar one, uh, all in quotes. And uh, we could uh, test that in the shell by typing, um, uh, because the reason we want to test it in the shell, sorry, is that if the tool, if the script does not work, the tool will not work either, it can't. So uh, the tool factory, it, it will not fix broken code, unfortunately. Um, the pull requests are being accepted. Uh, so if you run bash hello sh tool factory on the command line, you should see hello tool factory because that's the first parameter. It should be substituted here, and then this string should be echoed to the output. And so you should see that in your shell. So given that you've got a working script, what inputs do we need for Hello World? Well, we don't need any files from the user's history. We do need an output uh, because we want to produce a new text file, um, which contains the emitted string. We also need at least one, well, we only need one parameter, and that will be the user supplied string that follows the word hello in the output. Finally, we need to build uh, a test. And the logic of that test should be that the output from the tool, when it's run with the default value, should be exactly this string, hello tool factory. So uh, given that we've got all that, let, let me just run you through a quick demo. That there's, there's another one online, but I'll do one live because that's that's one of the um, traditions uh, of uh, of uh, uh, Galaxy products. So I'm, I'm in the Tool Factory appliance. It's all detailed in the introductory tutorial in the GTN, uh, uh, so you can get your own. And I'm going to fire up the Tool Factory and very quickly walk you through the Hello demo by naming the tool. I'll just call it Hello. We don't need any content dependencies because we're going to use Bash which is pretty much always available. We could use a Conda dependency. In fact, Bash is available as a Conda dependency. And if you really want to fix the version of Bash in your tool, you can, you can just put Bash here and it will, it will always use the same version, the, the most up-to-date version. The script will be, uh, as I said before, this trivial hello dollar one exclamation mark for added bonus points. And the tool factory is now asking, how do you want to pass the command line parameters for your script? Well, we need positional parameters. Um, we now get to the input section of the tool factory form. We don't need any input files from the user's history. We do need an output file, and that's going to be called hello out. And it will be of type text. And it it needs a position on the command line, but we're going to use a tool factory trick, which is to put STDOUT standard out, and uh, the tool factory will take the output from your script and uh, uh, put it into this output file in the user's history when the script runs. We don't need any more of these things. We do need one command line parameter of, um, of the type that the user can set, and that's going to be called, say, hello to. And it will be a text string, and its default value will be tool factory. Uh, the, the user will need some information about what this parameter does. So we'll, we'll put a label on the form next to the text box, which would say, say hello to. And uh, help goes here if, if the user needs any. Um, and in this case, the positional uh, is going to be, well, position is one because we want this to be dollar one in, in, the, in the script. Okay, all good. We don't need to fiddle with any of these. We'll give it a synopsis. This will appear beside the name in the uh, tool menu. And for what it does, we can put, we can put explanatory text here. And all of these, uh, I'll show you where all these fields end up on the form. Okay, we press execute. Uh, it's just a normal Galaxy tool. Here it is running. Uh, it's not quite a normal Galaxy tool, but it, it's basically a Galaxy tool. And if I click on the I icon of the output XML, I can see a pretty normal Galaxy tool. This is not quite as complex as the 
bow tie too, uh, as the example I showed you. Uh, but all this has been generated and it contains all of the stuff that we put on the form. And I, I hope you find that that's quite interesting. However, let me show you something uh, really interesting, particularly if, you're, if, if you know something about Galaxy. If I click on anal analyze data, you may notice something's changed. Namely, in this tool menu, I've got a new submenu, and that submenu has a new tool. And if I click on that new tool, I will see the tool that we just created. The text here is say hello to. Uh, that came from the form. The, the uh, what it does section has put more explanation here because that's what we typed into the form. And uh, it's just a normal Galaxy tool. Why don't we, um, why don't we run it? I'll change this just to show you that it really does work by saying hello to myself. Um, and what I expect is that when the generated tool that we're running now is completed, I should see, hello, Ross. Uh, so let's check. Yes, it appears to, to have worked. So here's the output from a tool and it's a redoable normal Galaxy job. It's got all the job, it's got all the normal things that Galaxy tool has because it is a, a normal Galaxy tool. It's just being generated by another Galaxy tool, the tool factory. Now, if you want, you can rerun the generating job and change it. Uh, and so we could, for example, add something like echo hello dollar one. Um, and we could add uh, something like goodbye dollar two. And if we add another parameter, let's go down here and uh, add one more command line parameter. We've got one, we're gonna ha have another one. And this will, will be the goodbye parameter. And its value will be uh, Ross. And the label will be say goodbye to, uh, won't put any health, but we'll make it parameter two. And uh, once again, we don't need to do much. I'm just gonna execute this. And I didn't change the tool name this time. So what will happen is that the tool that's already installed in the Tool Factory Appliance is gonna be overwritten with this new XML, which has a new parameter, say uh, goodbye, and, um, and uh, a, a new script. I've actually updated the script. So this time, when we say, uh, when we execute the generate tool, it's still saying hello to the tool factory. I'm gonna swap this round and say goodbye to all your troubles and execute that. I'm pretty sure you could guess uh, what I'm hoping uh, the execution of this revised tool uh, will show. Uh, Ross, goodbye, all your troubles. Well, it works. So that's really uh, the tool factory in a nutshell. Um, admittedly, a, an entirely trivial and confected kind of example. But I, I hope that that's convinced you that the, the tool factory actually does automate generating trivially simple scripts. It can also generate more complicated ones, but we'll, we'll get to that. So what is the tool factory? Well, now you know it's a tool. It runs in Galaxy. It runs in a special Galaxy for reasons that, that are explained in the repository, the GitHub repository. Um, but it's a tool that generates new tools effectively inside Galaxy. The developer is responsible for specifying all the elements that match uh, the script that's being wrapped, and they must match precisely, or obviously it won't work. The script has to work, otherwise the tool won't work. Uh, but when you press generate, when you press execute, the, the tool factory will generate a new script. It'll generate a new XML with all those IO and parameters baked in. Uh, as you specified them on the form, it's immediately installed, which is probably one of the more interesting aspects of the tool factory. Um, and you can run it immediately to get instant feedback on what your form is going to look like, what your tool, how your tool is going to behave from a user's perspective. So the, the, the uh, probably one valuable aspect of this all is the redo button because it's quite uh, unusual to have uh, an integrated development environment for tools. I mean, the, the, um, the, 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 my goal is to produce um, a really simple way for newcomers to build new tools. And this is probably about as simple as it's ever gonna get uh, because you can, um, 
use the tool factory, generate a tool, modify it, regenerate it, modify it, generate a new tool. Um, the, the possibilities are, of course, open-ended. The tools that the tool factory generates are perfectly normal Galaxy tools. They're first-class Galaxy tools, no different from from ones that are written by hand. Uh, they contain all of the form settings and all of the inputs and outputs. They're functionally equivalent to anything that's written manually. Um, and if you have wrapped a useful script, not something trivial like Hello World, it can be converted into a toolshed ready archive using a utility, that, the Planumo test utility that's built into the Tool Factory appliance. Those converted archives, the finalized archives, contain the generated test and they are ready for the tool shed to be shared um, like any other proper Galaxy tool. Uh, uh, okay, so training material for the tool factory is available in the Galaxy training network and um, there are introductory and advanced tutorials uh, in the developer section. Um, the tool factory is supplied as a, a tool factory flavored uh, Docker Galaxy Stable appliance, so it's easy to pop up and throw away when you're done. Um, there are samples provided in the appliance in R script, in Python, Bash, Perl, and even Lisp and Prolog, uh, for those of you who know what they are, um, old people like me. There are features in the tool factory that are explained in the advanced tutorial, including uh, how to configure repeats and selects and collections and uh, demonstrations of simple filter tools. And I guess the, the most important thing is that if you're, if you're not a developer, if you don't write your own scripts, the Tool Factory is not going to do you any good and the training materials won't do you much good either because uh, you have to bring your own programming skills. It's assumed that you're an experienced script writing developer uh, because otherwise the Tool Factory doesn't do much. The design of the training is unusual. It's not like most of the other Galaxy training because writing tools are so open-ended. It, it, it's a self-study guide. Um, and you, you can learn, you start out by learning by, uh, I think the best way to start out is by changing the samples and see what happens and regenerating uh, the sample tools with modifications. And then you can start bringing your own scripts uh, and, uh, and wrapping those by providing appropriate uh, parameters. And that way, I think you know, pretty quickly, if, if you're not already convinced that it could be useful um, with a bit of, um, uh, experience, a bit of learning by doing, you'll quickly evaluate whether it's going to be any use in uh, your work for Galaxy. All right, so we're getting to the end. I'm just going to make a small pitch about uh, the value proposition and the limits of the tool factory. Obviously, it has profound limits because it's an automated code generator. It's not a skilled developer. Uh, and uh, a skilled developer can do much, much more and cover many more requirements than the tool factory can. Um, it can only automate certain constrained requirements. Um, for complex conditional parameter logic, like is needed for, for, for uh, things like the sample that I showed from, uh, from the IEC, uh, you're going to need to do manual coding. Now, the interesting thing about the tool factory, aside from being uh, useful uh, for learning about and building simple tools, is that the complex parameter logic um, that needs manual coding, uh, whether or not you're using the tool factory, uh, that can actually be expressed in uh, ways other uh, than the normal way of building Galaxy tools up to date, namely writing um, uh, the complex logic inside the tool document itself as Mako Python templating. Um, there's nothing stopping us from writing that complex logic in R or Python or whatever takes your fancy. Um, the cost is that the parameters have to be passed. So comparing what's done for complex tools now, uh, it's possible that many of the existing tools could have been constructed uh, using other scripting languages. Uh, it's just logic, so it can be moved to another language. And I guess the point that I'm trying to make is that many people who are new to Galaxy are capable uh, as scripters, they're perfectly capable of writing useful scripts, um, but don't yet know how to write scripts that involve uh, templating uh, inside 
the uh, tool namespace. Well, for those newcomers, the tool factory offers an opportunity to um, write complex logic in a script. Uh, and exactly how far you want to go with that just depends on, on, on what suits your style of development. Certainly the tool factory, once you've gone to all the trouble of filling in the form, the tool factory will take care of any command line parameters that need to be passed. You'll still have to, if you go this route, you'll still have to parse those parameters in your script. But that's, you know, that, that, that's not necessarily a big deal. And if you can't write a complex script using the conventional tools, you may be able to do it in the tool factory. It's less efficient than templating uh, because of the need to deal with the parameters. But it is more familiar and possibly more accessible to more developers than the existing um, conventional infrastructure. The really good news is you can ignore everything I've said and, um, and, and just choose whatever suits you best because ultimately that's, what, that's normally what developers do. All right, takeaway messages. Um, just to summarize, the tool factory, it's a Galaxy tool. It's an unusual one because it makes new tools from scripts. Um, it only runs in a specialized environment, which is the, the, the appliance that's provided. It won't run outside the appliance because it installs new tools, which is forbidden normally in Galaxy. And it, it allows you to use, if that's what you want to do, it allows you to use Galaxy as an integrated development environment. It's kind of clunky, but oddly satisfying, um, in my opinion. And it certainly potentially expands our collective tool building capacity um, because we're introducing an easy way to build simple tools uh, through the Galaxy graphical user interface uh, and turning it into a kind of clunky IDE. So this potentially helps to speed up tool suite development for new scientific domains. And um, it may also be useful as a learning tool because as new developers come on board, uh, if they start out with, uh, with the GUI kind of um, galaxy approach to building tools, they can build some simple ones, hello world, uh, and more complex than that. And looking at the emitted XML, I think will be uh, a boon for learning the dark arts of, uh, of um, galaxy tool wrapper um, manual construction. Okay, I'm gonna stop there. Um, once again, uh, as I always do, I'd like to thank you for using Galaxy and uh, just say that I hope that the Tool Factory proves of some use uh, in your work. Um, okay, thanks for watching.